How's it going, y'all? Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, today is a very interesting day because I'm going to go have sukemen for the first time. If you don't know what sukemen is, it is dip ramen. It's a type of ramen that you have where the noodles and the ingredients are separated from the broth. The broth is ultra rich. So you take the noodles and then you dip it into the broth and then eat it. Uh, you'll get to see more of that when we actually go. In Atlanta, there's actually, so I live in Atlanta. Oh, big story if you're new to this channel, but um, not. it's a pretty common thing that everybody knows um, who follow me on social media. But I live in Atlanta and there are there is a, a chain of restaurants called Okiboru um, that make ramen and sukumen. Uh, and we're gonna go to one of those locations and have some, and I'm so, so, so excited. But before we get started, we gotta get ha have breakfast. We gotta go to the gym because I gotta I can't lose my gains. And then um, I'm actually going to be giving a birthday gift to a really good friend of mine from med school. Okay, y'all. So today I'm going to be showing you how I make my cheap poor man's high protein ramen egg pudding dish. It's very simple, very easy, very cheap, but it packs almost twenty whole grams of protein y'all know i'm a whole high protein guy although you're gonna some of y'all are gonna call me out and say ben i thought you were low carb um uh just ignore that for for this uh the purpose of this video so i grab a packet of whatever ramen flavor i like and then i crush it up real good with a pestle honestly i barely ever use my mortar i just use this pestle to crush up this ramen i crush it up real good to the consistency i like i open up the package and then just dump it into a microwave safe container i'm using this tupperware container and then i just put the packet uh seasoning packet in the ramen you could use half to cut down on the salt uh but today i was feeling like i deserve all the salty goodness and i also really like this flavor so once i get um all the contents of the packet into the noodles the crushed noodles i add a little bit of water not too much just enough to uh coat it um I like my pudding to be as thick as possible and not watery, so I don't add too much. You're basically going to have to play around with the consistency if you want to make this as your poor man's high protein breakfast. So then I just put it into the microwave uh, initially for uh, 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And once 2 minutes 30 seconds has passed, I will uh, take it out of the microwave and add in my egg. So two minutes and 30 minutes have passed, so I'm going to go into my fridge, grab my carton of jumbo eggs. This is the largest egg size you can get possible at the grocery store. I mean, these eggs are huge. I, I try not to think too much about the amount of hormones used in these chickens to make these giant eggs, but you know, they're cheap and um, each egg is about eight, eight grams of protein. The ramen itself is about 10 grams. So all together when you make this dish, uh, you get about 18 grams uh, just for one meal and about I will say around uh, 440 calories which is um, if you're counting your macros it's pretty good it is a little bit high in carbs so you might have to lower the carbs you eat throughout the rest of the day which is what I do whenever I have this dish so once I have the egg in there I take a fork and just you know blend it into the ramen I make sure it's blended real well there's no chunky bits it almost feels like a liquid consistency you see that I am working real hard to make sure that it um, blends really well, uh, almost to the point where it feels like it's part of the noodle broth. And uh, at this point, I realized I actually like mine with a little bit more water, but it is what it is. I decided not to add any more water and just go with this consistency. And then what you'll do is you put it back into the microwave for another minute and 30 seconds. If you end up adding too much water and you notice it is more watery than you like, you can add an, an additional minute, so it'll be 2 minutes and 30 seconds. But um, because I didn't use that much water to begin with, I put it in for a minute and 30. And then uh, just wait, and this is, this is what it looks like once it's done. It's like this pudding-like consistency, it's more congealed, and I really love eating this. This is so, so tasty. And you'll see this is, this is not as watery as you would imagine it to be i like it with a little bit more water but this this was also very very delicious oh man breakfast was so good and the sun is finally coming out in atlanta <laughs> oh my god i hate the fact that i had like recently because of like daylight savings times i've been waking up before the sun rises 
Uh, I, I, I absolutely hate that. I just love more sun in my life. I might have seasonal affective disorder. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, uh, lately I've been training myself to get up at 7.30 a.m. every day. I feel like that's the perfect sweet spot to wake up just because I get so much of my chores done earlier in the day. And then I have the uh, later part of the day to uh, actually work on things that I like doing, uh, focusing on my hobbies, editing these YouTube videos, making reels and things like that. So um, it's nice being able to wake up early before everybody else does. And then um, my friends can text me later on in the day and I won't get as annoyed doing things that I need to get out of the day, out of the day done first. Um, so yeah, I'm just really glad the sun is coming up. Um, I'm already getting way, 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 way more perky. So the first thing I'm gonna do today after getting my chores done and settling in for the day is I'm gonna go give my best friend in med school her birthday gift because her birthday is in the beginning of December. And I got her the Lush All the Best gift package. Lush does a great job of creating these Christmas, not, not just Christmas, I think this is uh, available year round, but it's like hand packaged and wrapped. And I don't have to do any of that because I suck at wrapping gifts. Um, so I'm gonna give her that for her birthday. This is the like, nicest gift I've gotten. I've gotten her a gift every year, but this is the nicest one I've gotten so far because of the fact that um, she might be moving next year. Like I've said in my previous vlog that like, the fact that the residency match is so unpredictable, we just have no idea where we're gonna be headed. But she specifically applied to the West Coast and is interviewing on the west coast she's from california so she wants to be a little bit closer to family so um that's why she exclusively applied um to that region and i don't know where i'm going <laughs> i applied broadly so i applied in the southeast the northeast the midwest and even the west coast so um for me and because of like my specialty there's a lot fewer residency programs there's probably like half and then i'm also applying to a specialized specialty within that group and there's only like maybe 15 in the country so um i don't have much of a say but for her she's applying family medicine which has a lot more options available so she was able to exclusively apply to programs in the west coast she doesn't know if she's going to end up in california but she's going to end up somewhere close to family so I know for a fact that she's going to be moving next year. So I, I got her this Lush gift box. She's also vegetarian and doesn't take, uh, doesn't use any uh, animal product based uh, beauty beauty products. So I know Lush uh, is always ethically sourced. It's always um, cruelty free and it's never tested on animals. So I think she'll really like it. It was kind of pricey, but um, I gift giving is one of my love languages and I take a lot of pride in it. Um, and I just feel like she'll really enjoy this. So I'm excited to give it to her. Uh, she's also really sweet and she's really made med school bearable for me. Uh, she was one of the first few people that actually told me that like she never questioned uh, me being a man. Uh, even before I started taking testosterone, she was like, you know, um, you know, I'm from California and there's a lot of guys like you out there. And like, I, I've never doubted you for a second. So she's, she's been a huge part of my transition journey. I, 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 I she, I don't think she realizes it or, or she ever wants to admit that because she's just so humble, but she's made such a huge impact on my life. And I feel like I'm, I'm really going to miss her. And I hope that like we can stay in touch and we can still keep a pretty intimate relationship over the next couple of years and maybe the rest of our lives. And um, if it, it does come to a point where we don't talk as much anymore, uh, I'll still hold her close to my heart as someone who's had a really, really Im big impact on discovering who I am and being comfortable in my own skin. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just very, very grateful to have her in my life. So before I got ready to head out, I realized my black t-shirt was covered in cat hair. I mean, as much as I love having pets, if you have any form of black clothing, you're gonna need uh, a lint roller. So I use this Evercare brand pet specific lint roller. Lint roller. It's super sticky and all, gets almost all the hairs out. I also did the back, but I didn't show that because I had to take my shirt off. But like, look, it just wipes away all the lint. I've tried to use the sustainable lint rollers that are made of like fabric. Um, it did nothing so i'm gonna have to just stick to this brand of pet um pet specific sticky 
net rollers. I'll try not to use it too much, but with black clothing, I kind of have to. But it did such a great job. Oh my god, all the lint is gone, all the hair is gone. So because it's freaking frigid temperatures right now, we're literally going through an Armageddon apocalypse situation in Georgia. And like, I think the weather today was around like zero degrees. Um, I decided to go with a pretty comfortable Patagonia jacket. I mean, I got this for med school. It has my name pronouns on the med school I go to, but um, it was what I needed to stay warm. And of course I had to bring my camera vlogging bag. If you notice that there's a little attachment near the strap and that allows me to attach my GoPro to it. So it's really handy uh, whenever I need to go vlog. Hey y'all, update. So you might be wondering, Ben, why are you back in your apartment? I thought you were gonna go, um go get Tsukamen with your brother. Well, it turns out that um, after I hung out with my friend, it was great, it was wonderful, beautiful. We talked for an hour, it was around 12.30, and I was, I was, I just got in my car to head up uh, to Norcross. Um, my friend lives in South Atlanta, Norcross is an outside the perimeter in Northeast Atlanta. My brother texted me and was like, oh, by the way, um, I have to pick up our sister because she's leaving work early today because of winter break at two o'clock. And I was like, hi, it's 12.30 right now, we're not gonna have time. Uh, to really enjoy ourselves. So let's wait until uh, you come home at 2.30 for me to pick you up and we can go get Tsukiman. Well, uh, the restaurant closes at 3 o'clock till 5.30 for like the lunch break. So uh, we can't go this morning. So um, we, we decided we're going to go for dinner tonight. So I have some time. I'm going to go to the gym, take a shower, you know, get clean and pretty and, you know, hang around a little bit and then we can finally go to dinner and... <laughs> Uh, enjoy the soup, man. So I just got back from working out and then I had to go to CVS to fill out my uh, testosterone and Adderall prescription because, hey, baby, uh, we're not going to knock against the camera, are we? <laughs> because last time he messed up the audio. Right. Good boy. Mwah. I love you. <laughs> okay, but... um. While, before I go hop in the shower uh, and get ready to go get Sukumen with my brother for dinner, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how recently there's been uh, increased talks about why uh, healthcare workers talking about patients on social media, specifically on places like TikTok. So I, I wanted to weigh in my opinion on it. If you haven't heard of the situation, but apparently a couple of weeks ago, Emory University got under fire, especially because a couple of OBGYN nurses uh, in their hospitals uh, made a, a reel about what they don't like about their uh, OB patients who are in labor and delivery. Uh, and it's kind of derogatory. Talk really bad about the patients. It was part of something called the egg challenge. I don't, I honestly, um, <laughs> this is my millennial in me, but I don't know too much about it. But it basically people are talking about things that they don't like that other people. No, John no, <laughs> no, back to what I was saying. Um, things, uh, people talk about things that they don't like that other people do. So these nurses were talking very, very poorly of the, these nurse, uh, these not nurses, these patients that they have that are actively giving birth. So already these patients are going through a lot. They're at a really vulnerable time in their life. They're about to have a baby. Many of them are going to have their first baby. And because this is a, a city hospital such as Emory, these, uh, a lot of these patients are complicated cases, which, which means that they might have complications. They might have C-section. So this goes on to the whole ethics of talking about patients on social media, uh, even if you don't reveal a patient's personal information. Uh, I want to emphasize that if you do reveal a patient's personal information on social media, that's immediately a HIPAA viola violation. You could be sued and even lose your job at that point and never be able to get rehired. You'll lose your license as a physician if you were to do something like that. So I, I want to be honest. I do talk about patients. Uh, but on social media, but I never ever talk about a patient uh, when it comes to revealing their personal and very, very, like very deep personal information. I will never reveal that information on social media. And two, it's usually um, whenever I talk about a patient on either Twitter, YouTube or anything like this, it is a way for me to talk about something that I learned from the patient, how that patient has made me a better provider. Uh, I talk a lot, a lot about how, not just the medical part of a patient's experience, I talk about how a patient's life 
and how a patient talks to me impacts how I care for patients in the future. And I believe in the same philosophy of what a lot of ethical comedians say, when you make a joke about a certain group of people or someone you've interacted with, try to punch up instead of punching down. So my philosophy, when you do talk about a patient, anonymous patient on social media, it is to the benefit of um, your audience to know about this information. I'll give an example. I had a patient who uh, was in the hospital and only spoke Spanish. And I was very frustrated using the language line at my hospital, speaking to him in that way. So for the two weeks that I saw him, I learned, I taught myself how to speak Spanish. I taught myself, I knew basic Spanish, but I didn't know medical Spanish. So I learned a little Spanish terms like, um, uh, puedo escuchar tu corazón, which means, can I listen to your heart? And this patient has made me a better provider. And I share that story and in the speeches that I give, in the, um, in the interviews I go on. And right now, I'm, I'm sharing that on social media without giving up any information about who he is and what diagnosis he had. So I do think talking about patients is a way to, a way to lift up other people. But I also think you can talk about patients who've discriminated against you. I've had patients who've discriminated against me for my race. And uh, I've never revealed any information on these patients, but I do talk about how I've been treated. But you have to be very, very sensitive when you reveal this information and make sure that it can't ever be attributed to a certain patient that you've seen. So it's very important for me whenever I do do these kinds of things, I wait for a long time to pass before it can be traced back down to me. So that is to say that I never, 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 ever, ever, ever advocate or even I condone people making and punching down on patients for having legitimate concerns, for having legitimate issues with the medical system when they're admitted, for, for, for them being irritated. Uh, you, if, if you are irritated by the fact that a patient is irritated at you, uh, let your colleagues know. A debrief with your colleagues. You don't need to put that information on social media. It should only be used in social media when it is for the benefit of the people, of the audience. And um, I guess that's where I'll end it. I'm going to go shower, hop in the shower, and hopefully uh, get ready to go to the Sukumen, uh delicious dinner before going to work and doing some Uber Eats deliveries. And finally, we are at Okiburu Sukemen and Ramen, and the menu is actually pretty simple. I love the fact that they have a vegan ramen option. Sorry, there's no vegan dipping ramen option. So my sister ended up getting the vegan because she's completely halal. And my brother and I decided to get the spicy python sukemen, which is the spicy version of the dipping ramen. It's only about 50 cents more extra. And if you want even more noodles, you can uh, get kai dama, but uh, you'll see later on in this video that uh, they give us a lot, a lot of noodles. We decided to go to the Duluth location. There's about three locations in Atlanta right now, and it's so pretty. I mean, looking at the uh, outdoor decor, not outdoor, but indoor decor, they just made this place just so, so cute. There's some uh, like whiteboard walls. This, this place opened up pretty recently, so it's pretty empty, but you can actually write on the walls if you want to. There's a lot of couple names. It's so cute. But this is my Sukumen bowl. Oh my God. They gave us so many noodles and they gave us a lime to give us an extra citrusy kick to our noodles. Of course, I had to spray that on because I love anything that's sour. The hard-boiled egg, uh, not hard-boiled, but semi-soft-boiled egg uh, that is a classic traditional ramen entry was uh, also there. And they gave us about, I know that it looks like there's only two large pieces of chicken. We uh, I opted for the chicken because I don't eat pork that at all, really, uh, of course, because I'm Muslim. Um, but um, the chicken, uh, they gave us about like four pieces of pretty substantial chicken that's been lightly battered and fried. I know it doesn't look that interesting, but that chicken is so good and delicious. I immediately started taking some noodles and dipping it into the dipping ramen broth, and it is so rich, guys. Uh, it is salty, just like other ramen types, but not too salty. I was kind of worried that it was going to be extremely salty because it's super concentrated, but no, not at all. I tried the chicken by itself without dipping it into the, uh, the broth, and the chicken is just so absolutely delicious, but even with the broth, it just kicks it up a notch. 
Uh, I love these thick, delicious noodles. You can also opt in for thick, uh, thin noodles, but I like these thick, delicious noodles. And I thought I was going to order the Kai Dama, but no. Uh, the 70, $17 for this bowl of Sukumen is absolutely worth it because it gets you super super full yes it's a little carb heavy i mean i'm definitely taking a cheat day on this um but i have no regrets about eating this ramen it is so rich creamy and delicious um the broth is made out of uh chicken chicken and fish and uh it's not fishy at all actually it's pretty umami pretty flavorful pretty savory and it just mellows so well together oh and for the uh, spice factor it's actually not spicy at all uh, I thought it was just just enough spicy to give it a little bit of a kick, but not too much to burn your taste buds. My sister's uh, ramen, on the other hand, her spicy vegan ramen, that completely messed me up. She actually really enjoyed it and thought it was super, super, super tasty. And uh, she actually let me taste some her some of her bowl too and i thought it was very flavorful but i'm surprised she was able to finish as much as she did because after about two slurps i was like holy holy moly i can't i can't do anymore because this is this is really really spicy so if you are a spice fan and you and you're not a spice weenie definitely get the spicy vegan ramen if you are plant-based or don't eat any animal products but uh I would definitely get the regular vegan ramen if uh, if you're a spice weenie. It is really spicy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it hits hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so spicy. Why'd you order the spicy? I didn't know you would be that. Remember what spicy. we said about things not being spicy usually? That's why. Whew. Jesus. Yeah. You gonna have to get some almond pretzel, gas sex, and everything. Ooh wee! All right, y'all. I finally, finally made it home. It's around ten twenty. We finished dinner around six thirty. I took my siblings back home, and then it was close to seven o'clock. So I was like, "Oh my god, this! I have to make money tonight." So I went out as soon as I took my siblings home and did another three hours of Uber Eats deliveries. And then ended up driving 15 miles back home after my Uber Eats ship. So I am exhausted. I'm so ready to settle down, take all these clothes off and just rest. But it was a great time today showing y'all a little bit uh, throughout what I do in my day. And uh, my first time sharing my first time ever uh, trying dip ramen sukimen with y'all. Um, I hope if you're ever in the Atlanta area, you check it out. Apparently there's another location in New York, which Mikey Chen, the famous food vlogger, also have reviewed and checked out. Um, but it was it was phenomenal, it was delicious, and I can't wait to have it again uh, in the future. I love y'all, uh, have a good one. Follow me on my social meds to keep up with my daily life and activism work, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. Thank you for coming to this vlog, this is Ben.